Alrighty, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. I'm back and it is time for the final Alpha Star replay cast. It's been a long time coming. Uh, I think it's been two years or something since I first cast an Alpha Star game. But uh, yeah, here we go into into the last one of Alpha Star taking on Alpha Star. I know that uh, it took me a while to get around to finally casting this, but uh, yeah, it's been been kind of busy. I'm getting used to still kind of getting used to talking with the braces in. So uh, yeah, it's it's something. And yeah, once again, big thanks to the Alpha Star team to uh, to them answering those questions that we sent, to sending us these replays. It's just awesome. It is. It is awesome, and I know that some of you guys are still asking questions about Alpha Star and things like that. Uh, this really was a big milestone for gaming, for for gaming AI, really. And so, yeah, we're going to be having Alpha Star. We're kind of where it all started, PvP, for the final game. Uh, and we'll see which agent's going to come out on top, blue or red. As per always, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to go ahead and hit that like button before we get too far into this game. Uh, yeah, a PvP. It looks like both agents are going for an expansion. In a lot of these games, the agents are very, very similar. Which makes sense, as they all started at a similar point, for the most part. Uh, and yeah, basically from there we'll see where the diversion occurs. And which bot's, which bot's gonna be able to take it. And uh, yeah. Watching a PvP makes me just be like, ah, oh, it must be nice not to have to deal with cannon rushes as Alpha Star as they all got knocked out of the of the ladder for the most part. Uh, just not consistent enough for the most part, I guess. Uh, yeah, we take a look here. We see the mirrored builds so far, and then uh, everything everything looking pretty darn good. Adept on the way for both agents. Kind of hard to commentate when everything is the same for the most part. It's like, mm, yes, things things are the same. They appear to be the same. Yeah. Anyway, been been streaming myself. I just did my first stream in quite a while. Still doing the the Africa World tournaments as usual. So make sure to check those out. Join the Discord that's linked in the description. There's quite a few fans of Alpha Star, including myself, in that Discord quite a few StarCraft fans as well. We take a look here. The Adept for both agents just staying close to home for now while the Stargate's going to be getting up. I believe we had a Phoenix versus Phoenix, I want to say. And one of the agents just sort of fell behind because it committed to less Phoenix and got crowned. So we'll see if that's going to be the case again or not. Uh, two Adept moving out for Blue here, whereas Red has just got... Well, has got two out, but they're in a worse position. Now... Blue shades, but does not pursue the adept of red. Of course, all the adept can just shade. So now all of a sudden we're in a very similar situation, which two adepts are moving up into the natural of the blue alpha star, and two moving into the natural of the red alpha star. We'll see which one's going to get more damage done. The two adepts of the blue are attacking the red, and the two adepts of the red are attacking the blue. So far, things look more promising for a cleanup by the red agent as there's nothing. Now just the one Phoenix goes up to help clean this up. Both agents are going to be losing probes here. We've seen five and six go down, so it's actually very close as far as the losses go so far. Uh, the two Phoenix are going to clean out red side of the map, and there is the cleanup on blue side of the map. So red comes out slightly, slightly ahead in that situation, but uh, trivial, I'll say yes. Two workers is not that much. Uh, and I'm sure things will even up in the future, or they'll just compound into total death. We all know how PvP can go when you're playing with the exact same tools as your as your opponent in StarCraft, no matter the mirror matchups. ZvZ, PvP, PvT, it can all... You can think, alright, we got pretty much the same stuff, and then all of a sudden one of the players just loses. Because uh, you take a slightly off engagement. That's what we could see here. Uh, the blue has got more Phoenix now than Red. Looks like Red is charging another one across the map, so it could turn into a 4v4. It's got to be careful not to be caught out, but we'll see if that's going to happen or not. Here's a scrap. Phoenix versus Phoenix. Looks like it's going to be a fairly even trade, although Blue might bring back, but not quite well enough. Makes it two for two. 
Bit of hesitation there, bit of the AI derping on the Phoenix of Blue. Otherwise, it could have come out ahead and got that one out alive. But it did not. And now we're in this situation. Things are very similar. It looks like one Adept is going to get lifted up as Blue Red decides to send two more across the map. They get killed. I think they got maybe one probe there, but definitely not worth it for two Adepts. And this game is very even. Both players going into an extra Stargate, so it's going to be Masked Phoenix versus Masked Phoenix. Uh, that's, that's sort of something there. Now, let's take a look. Two more Stargates on the way for the Blue Agent. I'm not even sure if you can produce off two Stargates. I want to say just maybe it's going to be close, though. All the while, the Red Agent elects to go for a third Nexus, which is interesting it's all going to depend about when they take a fight of course the economy a good investment but when you're down production uh, that could really change things up and the red agent will be down in production probe is moving to take a third base for the blue agent though so things are going to be very even here really just that the red agent is going to be down a stargate but potentially up an upgrade as blue has yet to start its own plus one and uh, it could be one of those situations which if Blue just keeps pumping Phoenix and never reaches that threshold to get the 1-1, one, one, uh, it could just never, or to get the plus one attack, it could just never happen. That is one of the funny things about uh, AI, how it sometimes behaves in that regard. The Phoenix are actually going to engage each other already. I don't know how well this is going to work out for the Blue Agent as it's getting pushed back by the Red Agent, taking big losses on the Phoenix count. Down one, which is may as well be a million just running on home, however, with the higher production, but then it stops, takes the fight, it's gonna be a scrap. Reinforcements coming across the map, though, meaning that these Phoenix are juicing it out, but oh gosh, this is not looking too good for the blue Protoss, and all of a sudden, oh, we are looking at disaster. I felt that I was cheering for blue here, but he's not doing too hot, as he loses quite a few more Phoenix there, I believe. 12 to 8, that is a just ginormous loss in a mirror match of four Phoenix going down, and if we look at the count, it's not that big, but yeah, Blue's just continuously fighting, but it's not really getting any better. Although that was a good engagement there. Two Phoenix for one. It's going to pull back the injured ones and actually try and get a fight going. Where's the next round of production? More Phoenix, more Phoenix. That's the name of this game. Probes are going down, though, for, for Blue. Red's getting some good damage done. It's retreating to its shield battery, but uh, doesn't seem to have the best understanding of using that. The scrap is going to continue. This is just chaos here. Looks like Blue is going to get a good engagement as it continues to push forward. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is just a razor's edge. Blue has definitely taken quite a bit of a beating, whereas Red uh, has just been constantly aggressive. Killing off all those probes was huge. The production is still ahead as it is just three, as it is just two gates versus three. So given time, Blue will have a significant lead, but then we see there's a sentry on the way for the Red Agent. There's plus one done, so its Phoenix are going to be much better than Blue's, and if Blue just moves across the map with these Phoenix and attacks on in, it pretty much deserves to lose here. Uh, as going on in, when you're, like, Defender's advantage is huge in StarCraft, so the Blue Agent has got to sit back, just build up, going for a fourth Nexus. I like the fact that the Agent chose to do this, or elected to do this, I don't know. That whole, uh, doesn't really ever choose to do anything. Now, we've got the Red Agent going for a ton of gateways, so investing a load of resources into this, potentially for a ground transition. Keep in mind, there's no blink or anything like that. There's going to be a scrap here. The Guardian Shield pops, and the plus one up to the Red Agent, though, is going to mean this fight will go very well for it. And, oh, this could just be curtains here for the Blue Agent, although this fight's not going too, too bad. I just don't even know what to make of this, man. Uh, Blue ha is now up in Phoenix due to the due to that production we're seeing a lot of sentries on the way for the red agent which is bizarre uh actually really bizarre why so many sentries red uh i don't know when it's phoenix versus phoenix sentries aren't really going to do that good just building more phoenix would help archons are generally what you want for a ground for a ground army phoenix still strapping against each other blue has got the numbers advantage but there's all those sentries on the ground now which are somehow a factor in this game uh this is, this is just wonky. Fourth base up and mining for the blue agent. No such thing for the red agent. Adepts have been warped in for the red agent. So we're seeing full-on alpha star derp when it comes to uh, air versus air. And it decides to warp in adepts. They really aren't going to help on out. 
Uh, Phoenix are going on down. There's some stalkers that have been warped in, but the Phoenix count of the red agent has been totally wiped. So now it's free reign for the blue agent. Gonna start lifting up stalkers. Gonna be able to kill out any Phoenix that pops on out. We'll see how much damage these Phoenix are able to get done. If the blue agent's gonna be able to hold on back at home against this attack across the map. What a game for the final Alpha Star versus Alpha Star match. Something so technical as Phoenix versus Phoenix, but ah, uh, the ground army's looking mighty scary. That belongs to the red agent. Are these sentries gonna get lifted up? No, not just yet, but the uh, Phoenix do get that warp prism, so no reinforcements on the fly here. We now see an immortal on the way for the blue agent. That lets stalkers warping on in. We see a dark shrine on the way for the red agent. The 10 minute dark shrine, a PvP classic. Here's gonna be a scrap. Will the Phoenix for blue be utilized correctly? Immortal's about to pop on out. Uh, this could be game depending on how this fight goes. The Immortals shooting away. The Phoenix have lifted all that they can. The Immortals down though for the blue agent. Probes are being pulled into the mix as the Phoenix are not pulling their weight enough. As the uh, probes have to be pulled off the line. Slow Zealots are doing what they can. There's some good lifts getting some of the stalkers. At some point the blue agent is going to have to stop pursuing you imagine but would these Slow Zealots and the Phoenix pickoffs are happening but that is quite a stalker ball. For the red agent there what does the blue agent have looks like another immortal just finished on up that's going to be a big deal zealots to buffer its own stock account growing army supply is in favor for the blue agent but that's receiving of course this is phoenix supply stalkers are being lifted up adequately we see the prism get gunned on down there and that's a big deal looks like phoenix are taking a lot of damage as the count has been reduced to six but there's an immortal on the side for blue there's Phoenix on the way, still more Zealots on the way. I'm not really sure which agent's the head here. The base count is in favor for Blue still. Uh, as Red is just getting up his fourth base. There's an aggressive blink. Picks off, I think, a stalker there, but Phoenix lifting up these stalkers, taking them out of the fight while the Immortals do work. The Zealots is really buffering here. Looks like this fight is going pretty well for the Blue agent, but I don't know about uh, moving out aggressively. There's a blink by the Red agent, of course, into two Immortals, though, so it's going to be very very painful you see a prism was produced by the blue agent maybe looking to go for a counter attack still churning out those phoenix they're all actually very low on energy because they've just been lifting non-stop resources lost is probably in favor of the blue agent at this point and it is not as close as you think since it took a bit of a beating earlier but still in a bit of a rough spot war prism now can micro with that alpha star skill to prevent those immortals from dying which is a big factor and now the blue blue agent seems to have pretty good advantage these two immortals the phoenix really doing good work against the mainly stalker composition stalkers being lifted up in the middle of this fight see the immortals at the back they're starting to shoot zealots firing away is this prism going to warp in more units for the blue agent keep this push going the blink of course is great by the red agent what a pvp we have here it looks like though the red agent is going to sacrifice its base it really doesn't have a choice to uh, take that fight Stalkers in the prism is an interesting choice. They're red, so I guess the agent's like, yeah, keep them safe. Keep them in the prism, you know. Phoenix getting more and more lift off, so these immortals are just doing so much work in the Phoenix. Really putting red into his spot of bother. Down on army supply. There's a DT that was warped in, and there is no observer here for the blue agent. The DT save there for the red agent. Gonna make the blue agent retreat with his tail in between his legs. Stalkers blink forward. The immortal is saved, though, by the prism. Uh... Those units can just continuously be juggled by the blue agent, but all of a sudden the blue agent is retreating. The prison gets sniped on down. Well done by red there. Now chasing blue all the way home. The DT is with their capes and sights chasing this army down. All of a sudden, what seemed to be a win for the blue agent is now looking not so clear. There's an oracle on the way. There's an observer on the way. So the detection is now a thing, but. That bot, uh, that bot read some life in this game. We see an Archon's been morphed in in order to uh, deal with those Phoenix, potentially. The Phoenix, though, still, of course, can let Stalkers snipe down that Prism, which is oh so critical. It's still just constant Phoenix production, which is kind of crazy, seeing as how they have no upgrades for the Blue Agent. Looks like we're going to be seeing a Scrap Oracle even activates its Pulsar Beam in that fight. Phoenix Buffering lifting up a few Stalkers. We're seeing more and more lifted up. The push in by Red was very bold. It's looking like it's trying to break blue here, but the Phoenix are really doing some work as Red's not getting as much damage out on these Stalkers as it could be. 
the fourth base for the blue agent now going to be under fire but they're just going to go the prism that belongs to the red agent that is a big big kickoff by the blue now we take a look blue stepping out trying to take this fight wants to save its nexus all the while on the other side of the map red has re-secured up a fourth base so this game is closer than you'd think the phoenix really haven't been pulling their weight as much as they can the one thing that is going for blue though is the, is the fact that it's been getting out immortals again Immortals are just pretty darn good against any number of stalkers. Okay, now we take a look here. We see an Immortal, another Immortal on the way, a Sentry on the way. Continued Phoenix production, of course. Phoenix aren't going to be nearly as good now that Archons are being added on in. Archons and Stalkers are arguably better than the composition of the blue Protoss. No fifth base, no further tech coming up for either agent. Stalker's getting some good lift on these Phoenix, but Blue's pushing out once again, and I'm not sure if it can make that happen. If it follows trend, it's going to fire up a warp prism here, which is going to be interesting to see how that behavior works. Looks like it hasn't fired up anything else out of this robo yet, as it's just dumping oh so much money into Phoenix. The Phoenix, not cost efficient. There's been 63 that have gone down this game. Uh, we're now seeing a scrap as Red steps forward again. The Phoenix now does not get the best lift. They're getting a few. Uh, Archons are shooting away on them. Now they're doing some work as they lift up oh so many stalkers. The blue agent just elects to go forward after removing a ton of them from the fight. Picking them off as it goes. Looks like the Red agent using quite a bit of supply there. The Phoenix can potentially get more lifts off. Uh... Yeah, is there going to be more risks? I mean, there is some good damage getting done volleying down those Phoenix. It's uh, not cheap for the Blue Agent to keep replacing those. The three Immortals in the back are ever threatening, though, for the Red Agent, forcing their three good micro in the prism there by the Red Agent, keeping those Archons alive so they can regen shields. Now we're seeing a beautiful concave by the Red Agent. All of a sudden, the Blue Agent may have overcommitted. There's no prism here for the Blue Agent. Looks like the Warp Prism isn't getting picked off as quick as it could be. A Stalker Warp and finishes for the red agent all of a sudden the blue agent overextended down on supply by a vast margin seeing as how these phoenix have got a lot of work to do they're flying in the main base actually causing the red agent to go all the way home which may be uh maybe taking the wind out of its sails preventing it from going for a counter attack uh the phoenix really don't have that much energy back on the blue side of the map it's chrono boosting out an immortal of course it's making more phoenix because why ever stop now we see the fifth base is being attempted by the blue agent i'm not sure how well that's going to work out though because once red does get a chance to counterattack, the army supply is vastly in favor for red and it's much superior units the phoenix has not been doing work war is going to go down that's painful what is there one immortal one immortal for the blue agent we need to see zealot stalkers really anything but phoenix for the blue agent at this point in the game and uh gonna try and hold now it's warped in more stalkers phoenix are getting some lift off zealots getting surface area incredibly effective actually against stalkers uh phoenix lifting up more and more stalkers can that prism get targeted down yes it can the warping gets cancelled the one immortal that red has finally made is getting lifted up we see why it maybe hasn't made any more this game uh phoenix are getting targeted down expertly done by the red agent we saw probes get pulled to maybe turn this fight army supply is fairly close now as the uh, blue started to make less phoenix and more more ground and gateway units which really is what it needed in this game blue now making more probes gonna try and saturate up its fifth base keeping that lead it's got to be careful though this number of stalkers seems like it's more superior to just this one immortal a couple centuries and a few stalkers second immortal is popping out that's a big deal We've seen more and more zealots warp on in i really don't know what to make i honestly thought clicking on this game that it could be like a 10 minute like a 5 or 10 minute game and then the AI just kind of derps till the end no we're almost 20 minutes in and these agents are still going at each other which is just awesome to see Stalker's going in for the red agents Chargers for just the natural base the Phoenix production of blue could be hampered here which honestly wouldn't be a bad thing and the blue agent is actually kind of derping out electing to go across the map forcing a bit of a base trade and i honestly think a base trade is going to favor the red agent as blue is making really just a couple of phoenix at this point no you need to be getting out every single unit but you possibly can there's some stalkers warped in we are entering a full-on base trade town though phoenix is not going to be as effective in a base trade 
Of course, blue with the extra base is going to have more more production. There's also the DPs, which are a factor for the red agent. And uh, if we look at the unit count, it's 34 stalkers to 18. The two immortals, I don't think, can make up like a 20 stalker difference. Even with the few Phoenix to help on out, we see the blue agent just going around doing whatever it can. But all these bases are under fire. There's another cyber core on the way. Blue just... Its composition got it little edges here and there, but it seems that it could cost us this game. As I'm not sure it'll be able to take a fight. Of course, the sentries are a factor. I mean, AI can always derp out and just have some huge plunders. Uh, yeah, I really don't know what to make of this, though. Of course, AI doesn't exactly play out base trades the best. The best, you know. But there's always a chance here for the blue agent. Red just has done well. I'm... Continuing on with stalkers, if I was a player, I think this is probably what I'd do. If I knew my opponent was going to keep making Phoenix, I'd say, sure, stalkers and archons aren't half bad. Uh, it's all going to be about where the fight takes place, and looks like Red is going to be looking to take a much better fight here. Stalkers blink forward, pick off a Phoenix. Every unit matters in this fight. Looks like a stalker is potentially going to go down to the Red player. Potentially two, actually. This is very important how this fight happens. Of uh, either player bleeds off some units foolheartedly, but all of a sudden, oh, red blinks forward, gets a good engagement. Hallucinated Archons are actually popped by the blue agents, so these immortals are getting some good shots off on the stalkers. The Phoenix have buffered, but they're pretty much all dead. The Prism isn't really a factor at this point. I mean, it can micro. Probes are even coming in for the red agent. By God, this is just a nuts PvP. You, you think this is too top tier. Protoss players for how close this game has been, and it is two top tier Alpha Stars, but I think Red has done it. The Phoenix just did not cut it for the Blue Agent. Ladies and gentlemen, hit that like button as uh, this game is done, it looks like. What, what a nutty match between these two. Uh, I enjoyed watching this, that's for sure. <laughs> what a great game. Alpha Star PvP really delivering in this one. I'm What a match. This was awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks so much to everyone for tuning in. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't. Join the Discord, which is linked down below. Uh, this is it for Alpha Star content, but let me know if there's anything else you want to see. Make sure to check out the streams. I'm a ladder hero. Uh, not much of a hero, more just like a ladder exister, a ladder being, a ladder creature, I don't know. Uh, doing my best. So check out those streams, join the Discord. Uh, yeah, as we just, uh, watch the Red Agent destroy all the stuff, and don't go anywhere. There's gonna be more, more, uh, questions that you guys asked answered by the Alpha Star team. But I'm always afraid to say his name, because I'm worried I'll pronounce it wrong, but answered by Wojtek, I believe was how it was pronounced. Uh, cool name. Uh, tough for my inexperienced linguistic skills, though. Uh, yeah, there's the next that's being found that Alpha that Blue tried to throw up. And that's not the last building. Just one pylon. Oh, pylon dying to probe. Oh no. Stay tuned. Are there any plans to put Alpha Star back on the ladder? Maybe in a consistent way, such that players can play uh, against it whenever they want. StarCraft is an ever-evolving game. It has new maps, new balance patches. Things keep changing quite rapidly. In order to have an AI agent that would be able to perform under these changing conditions, we would have to either retrain it from scratch each time changes like this happen, or at the very least run some sort of fine-tuning adaptation phase or develop methodologies which allow to somehow um, just gather this information about what has changed and perform still very well. Um, neither of these three was the challenge that we put in front of ourselves as the uh, aim of this project. It could be an interesting uh, next step for various research groups to have an AI system that's capable of adapting to these sort of changes. Uh, but with the current solutions that we have, this would be a really expensive process. Not only now from pure ML perspective, but also because it would now become a product, right? Um, and AI that is 
uh, part of the game where thousands of players consistently play against it and it would require a significant work from both Alpha Star team and Blizzard team to maintain uh, and enrich it as the time passes. And for now, we do not have plans to do so. What is your favorite Stark appeal? For me, it's probably a combo of Disruptor and the Stalker. Well, Blink Stalker, to be honest. Um, especially Alpha Star Hands. It can do magnificent dance with these two units that it uh, showed many, many times when it was playing against TLO. Of course, um, me personally, as a human, I can't do anything like this since I'm just a low Diamond League player. Um, so, if the question is about the favorite unit uh, that I can actually use, uh, then it's probably gonna be a probe, since it's the only worker that can consistently win games. 